So I think many Americans, when they think about the persecution of Christians in the Middle East, they only think about it in terms of religious freedom or religion. And of course, that is, that is the main part of it. But the Christians of the Middle East are, are the indigenous people of the Middle East. And whatever community we're talking about, whether it's the Maronites in Lebanon or the Assyrians of Iraq or the Copts of Egypt, these people are Christians and they do face persecution because they're Christians. But uh, that persecution takes on an extra special tone because these people are indigenous. They were there for thousands of years. They were there living not only as religious communities, but also in some cases as, as ethnic communities that were there when uh, Islam came in the seventh century. And I think that it's important when Americans think about religious persecution that they're also thinking of the ethnic, the national, the territorial element of that as well. The main focus of the Philos Project is to educate Western leaders on the issues of liberty and justice in the Middle East. And for us, one of the main issues is the status, uh, the increasingly difficult status of Christians living in the region. So we bring people on trips to the Middle East, we introduce them in a personal way to the people who live there and help them understand from the ground level what's actually happening. So one of the, one of the most important things the Philos Project does is not only advocate, but also educate people who will be doing advocacy in the future. And we focus a lot on the next generation of Christian leaders here in the United States and across North America, understanding that even after I'm gone, even after the Philos Project is gone, these people will remain. And whether they're going into journalism or policy, politics, into church ministry, they need to understand in, in a serious way what's, what's really happening on the ground. And so we bring people on trips, we do leadership institutes, we do events, we build chapters. All of it is intended to equip these, these leaders to make change going forward. I think that people who work on the issue of Christian persecution sometimes are a little too short-sighted, maybe even small-minded. There's a lot of work that's been done on the humanitarian level, there's been uh, work you know, trying to help people who were victims of ISIS, rebuilding their homes, rebuilding their churches, and all of that is really important. But what I feel has often been missing from the discussion is any sort of strategy, any sort of long-term discussion about how to really integrate these people as equal citizens in their societies. I think the solutions for Christians in the Middle East are different depending on the place where they are. Uh, I think in some places, such as Egypt, where Christians are scattered throughout the country, there's no single area where they have any kind of predominance. I think it's important to work on uh, integrating them as equal members of, of their society. And not just at the level of civil society, but, but also in politics. You know, there's a lot of um, concern about affirmative action in this country, you know, making, taking special steps to ensure the equality of minority citizens. But whatever you think about how that concept works here, I think it's, I think it's really something we need to think about in the Middle East. You know, if we just left to their own devices, these governments are not working hard to integrate Christians into their societies. And in a place like Egypt, I think they need to go above and beyond. Now, in other parts of the region, there are uh, states where Christians have unique, um, a unique foothold in certain parts of the country. So for example, in Iraq, in northern Iraq, in, in Dohuk province, in, in Nineveh, there are places where Christians are exceptionally predominant. I think in those places, uh, their governments need to find ways to create space for them to protect their society, protect their culture, their language, their religion, and sometimes that means uh, taking uh, steps that look like uh, federalism or devolving power, creating new, new areas for these uh, people uh, to live in. So I think, I think there's lots of different ways that we can uh, imagine a future for Christians of the Middle East, but, but I'm pretty sure that what we're doing now isn't enough. You know, a lot of times people think about Christians as minorities as people who are victims who need our help. And they do, that's true. But historically, Christians have been some of the most important uh, people in Middle Eastern societies, not only in the realm of religion, being Christian, but in, in business, in politics. Uh, some of the leading philosophers and writers and artists were Christians. And wherever they were, in whatever society they lived in, Christians tended to rise to the top. What they brought to the society wasn't just, uh, you know, the 
added value of another religion. It was another worldview. It was another population that provided the Middle Eastern mosaic with, with a real vibrance and, and a real strength that disappears the more that Christians disappear in the region. I think the persecution of Christians is one of the most urgent matters of our day. And I think that it's very possible that within my own lifetime, certainly within the lifetime of my children, that Christians could be almost gone or completely gone from the Middle East. I think it's very conceivable. This is a very likely scenario. I think there's been a lot of uh, talk, there's been a lot of conferences, a lot of meetings, a lot of discussions, some campaigns, some rallies. Uh, and in the meantime, the numbers, the population of Christians in the Middle East is just plummeting. Is it too late? Maybe. I think in some parts of the region, yes, it probably is too late. But there are still a few places in Egypt, in Lebanon, in Iraq, and in Syria where we still can do something. And I think the longer we, wait, the, longer we wait, the less likely it is that anything is going to, going to change.